beautiful song, what a beautiful chorus. Amen. What a beautiful moment Amen. to sing such a song. Fill my cup, Lord. Amen. He said, Ask and it shall be given. Amen. Seek and you shall find, and knock and the door will be opened. Because if we don't knock, if we don't seek, and if we don't ask, we can't complain. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing to cry out to God and ask Him to fill our cup. Because every day we need a new filling. Yes, yes. Yesterday filling is not good enough for today. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible said every day is new grace. Yes. A new mercy. Hello, hello somebody, hello somebody. Amen. Good morning my brothers and sisters. I'm grateful to be here another day. In the house of the Lord to give God praise and glory. Welcome to you all. Today, a day that many mourn the loss of their loved ones, yes. the loss of a friend, a relative, a colleague. Can you believe that today is the 21st anniversary of 9 11? Am I right? 21st? Yes. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's yesterday. Yes. Right? I remember exactly where I was. Mm -hmm. I was working in the body shop. Just came from America, um, from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Green as grass. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even know my way around much. I was right here in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. Farragut, mm -hmm. working in a body shop. And we heard that one plane hit the tower. And somebody shouted, it's a terrorist attack. I think this was my boss. He said, it's a terrorist attack. I didn't understand what he was saying. Mm -hmm. And we heard again that another plane hit it. And I said, wow. He said, yes, it's a terrorist attack. They're attacking America. Still didn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> I don't know about no terrorist attack. Mm -hmm. and the time I hear about terrorists is when I'm watching movies. Mm -hmm. We don't know about no terrorists in Jamaica. You know, we're criminals, not terrorists. <laughs> but we live to see of something that happened so long can have this devastating after effect. Yes. Am I making sense? Yes. Amen. Because so many people, as you mentioned today, Brother Hazel wrote that so many people die after that mm -hmm. from cancer. Yes. Some of them die from heartbreak. That's why we have to be careful to give God thanks Amen. each morning that we wake. Yes. Don't take life for granted. Thousands Amen. of people die after, during the after effect. But I'm glad to be in the land of the living. I'm glad to see your faces. Sister Joy, it's a, such a pleasure to see you. It's been a long time, yes. probably more than 21 years probably. that I haven't seen you. But thank God we are still in the land of the living. Thank you, my sister, for moving back. So we're expecting to see you jumping up and running up and down the church. <laughs> make some noise. Spirit said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. 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 I don't mind making some noise. I don't mind shouting out. I wanted to sing this song this morning, but because I'm not so gifted with singing, I keep my mouth shut. But I wanted to sing the song. I feel like running, I feel like skipping, I feel like Amen. praising the Lord. Because Amen. when you were leading the courses, I get a bit excited in myself and I say, I want to sing that song, but I can't start it. <laughs> so you know, I said to myself, you know what? Better you better you rest. Better you rest, 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 rest. But it's a, a, a beautiful chorus that we used to sing in CY back in the day in Jamaica that on Joy. We used to sing that song, I feel like running, skipping, praising the Lord. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. How are you doing? You good? I want to read um, the text again um, from the Amplified Version. You know, I like the Amplified Version because it kind of gives a little difference. John 12, reading from verse 24 through 27. I, sure, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the hurt and dies, it remains just one grain. 
It never becomes more but lives by itself alone. But if it dies, it produces many others and yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it. But anyone who hates his life in this world will find it to eternal life. Whosoever has no love for or no concern for, no regard for his life here on earth, but despises it, preserve his life forever and ever. If anyone save me, if anyone serve me, he must continue to follow me. To cleave steadfastly to me. Confirm holy to be my example in living and if need be in denying. And wherever I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now my soul is troubled and distress. And what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour of trial and agony. But it was for this very purpose that I have come. For this hour that I might undergo it. Let us pray. God of grace, we want to thank you. Thank you for your freshness, for your anointing, for your presence, for your grace, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that your word will go forth and accomplish that which you please and will not come back void. I pray for a special anointing, God, to anoint me afresh from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, that your word will speak to our hearts today. Bind every country spirit and release that freshness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Turn to your neighbor and say, the seed must die. The seed, seed must, must die. die. The seed must die. The seed must die. Amen. For the tree to come alive, the seed must die. Jesus used parables and analogies as a method of teaching that complies his listeners to think. He often used familiar scenes to explain spiritual truth. But most of his teachings, parables, and analogies have one main point. In this case, he used an agricultural example to illustrate the example of the great law of life. The law of the seed is the law of human life. The course of nature. That life issues from death. The seed can only reach its full and proper development by being sown in the ground and die. It is in this process that the seed can multiply itself. To preserve the seed from this burial in the ground is to prevent the seed from obtaining its best development and use. All grain of wheat contains the germs of life in itself, the virus of life in itself. Would remain alone and not really live unless it falls into the earth and die. When it dies, the life germs will burst forth. And the single grain in its depth would give life to the herd of corn. Its death then is the true life 
for it release the inner power which ox before I held captive. This life power multiplying itself in successful grain would close the hurt, the field with a harvest of much food. A seed can produce millions of resources, but it must die. A seed must die to become what it destined to be. The harvest, beautiful and rich, result from the fact that the grain had died, the seed had died. If the seed does not die, it will never germinate or produce the glory of the crop. Germinate. Germinate is the development of a plant from a seed or spores after a period of dormancy. But what is dormancy? Dormancy is the state of being temporary inactive, of being temporary inactive and inoperative. The process of something coming into existence and development. From a seed to develop into a tree, it must, it must die. It needs other components to grow into its form. A seed needs bacteria to grow. A seed needs bacteria, we call it fertilizer, to grow. The plant is within the seed. The seed has to go through a process to grow into a tree. A tiny seed has a huge tree in it. But the seed must be transformed for the tree to come alive. The seed, the seed. The seed must be transformed for the seed, for the tree to come alive. Just as a grain of wheat needs to be planted to produce life and fruit. It is the same in the spiritual realm. People can only experience life and joy when they decide to die to their self-centered existence and give control of their life to Christ. This analogy is a beautiful picture of the necessary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. When Jesus was in the human form, he was just a kingdom of seed. The inner part of the, the, of the inner part of the seed. The kingdom must die to bring forth an harvest. The son of man must die to bring forth salvation to humanity. The son of man, the son of man must die. In order for him to bring forth fruit and produce many seeds, he must cease to be the inner part of the seed, but be transformed into what the seed is destined to be. Jesus was destined to bring life to humanity. So in order for him to bring life, he got to go through the process and he got to die. Because if he did not die, he would not be called our Savior. Amen. If he did not die, you and I wouldn't have any time to celebrate salvation. Amen. But because he died and rose again, we live and we can sing because he lived. Amen. I can face tomorrow. tomorrow. Amen. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Amen. Jesus. State that now my soul is troubled. In verse 27. What shall I say? Father save me from this hour. He's asking a question. What shall I do? Shall, shall I give up? Shall I quit? Shall I go back to the father with an unfinished work? But that is why I came at this hour. Here we see Jesus in his full humanity. When he mentioned, my soul is troubled. That signified anxiety. At this time, Jesus was in 
contemplate and of thinking on the on the wrath of God for the sins of everyone. The sins of you and I. Not because he waved in his purpose, but because he knew the suffering that he would endure in being the sin of this world. He would experience physical torture and separation from the Father. But he was obedient to the point of death. Because if there is no death, there would be no salvation. If there was no death, there would be no freedom from sin. The Apostle Paul put it this way. God had made Christ who had never sinned in any way. Drew in his life on earth. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. To become our sin. Jesus' death then paid the price for our sin. Removing our guilt and obstacle between us and God. For some must die for something to come alive. Something must die for something to come alive. Amen. The course of nature is that life issues from death. Something in our life must die for something to come alive. We always want new things, but we want to hold on to the old things. But the old things got to die for the new things to come alive. For we to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, we got to surrender something. We got to surrender the life that we live as a non-Christian to be transformed into a Christian. The horror that Jesus mentioned is that there was the beginning of that transformation. The horror that Jesus mentioned is the horror where the transformation begins. He had to go through the neutral zone. The neutral zone. What is the neutral zone? The neutral zone is a time of loneliness and isolation. In football, the neutral zone is an era where no team member may be other than the person holding the ball. John Wayne, get that, get that. The neutral zone is where you, nobody can be except you who have the ball. In other words, you are all by yourself. Your best friend can't be here. Mama and Papa can't be here. You are on your own. You got, got to face the music all by yourself. There come a life, a, a time in our life when we have to face the music all by ourselves. Mm -hmm. The neutral zone. The neutral zone is where no other team member can go except the person that holding the ball. Sometimes you wonder where is your friend when you most need them. It's because nobody can be there when you're in the neutral zone. The neutral zone is a time of refining, a time of processing, a time when, 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 when God is processing you. When the seed is so in the ground, you have no control over the seed. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Amen. When you have a seed in your hand, this is what the text is saying. The seed remain just a seed. One seed. Until you plant that seed in the ground. And when you plant the seed in the ground, you have no more control over that seed. You have to just now trust the process. Yes, yes. Amen. You can go there every day and water it and, 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 and put a little stick there and say, this is the place. And I'm hoping that by tomorrow it will spring up into a tree. But still, you don't have any control over it. You can pay your part. You can water it. You can put manure. You can put the bird, whatever it is, and the plant and the seed. But you can't control what happened to the seed when you plant the seed. You got to just learn to trust God in that moment that the seed is going to transform into what it is destined to be. Amen. Oh, can I preach? Can I preach? Can I preach? Amen. You can't control. Uh, and, and we are not so good with letting go and let things happen. We are not so good because we always want to be in control. 
abandoned and alone you will feel abandoned and alone at a time of refining a time when you have to decide if you are sold out or not if the purpose <laughs> is more important than the pain uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they hear that there is a time when you have to decide if the purpose is more important than the pain. What I'm simply saying to you, it is painful to go through the transformation. <laughs> Amen. They say in, in, in Jamaica, if you want good, you know as a run. Yes. It is painful to go through the process, but you got to realize that there is pain and there is purpose. Which one is more important to you? If I want the purpose, I have to go through the pain. If you don't go through the pain, you will never get the purpose. Amen. 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 You have to decide whether the purpose or the pain. You must go through the moment of transformation all by yourself. A time when you struggle to find your true purpose. A time when you struggle to master your craft. A time of loneliness. It's lonely because no one can go through it for you. No one can go through it with you. A time when you need to decrease so God may increase. John the Baptist state, I must decrease that Christ might increase. If God is going to use you for great things, you must decrease and allow God to increase. Amen. Oh God. Amen. Amen. You know what they said? They said they said the stage of transformation is an up is unhappiness. Hmm. <laughs> the, 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 the stage of transformation is an unhappy process. Because sometimes you're gonna lose some stuff. A time when you are seeking answers and meaning. A time when you are trying to make sense of the process, of the purpose, of your own mission. A time when you're trying to find yourself. You're going through it. it, it it's an uncertain time. Because you don't have any control over the transformation. Paul said, a palace water, a palace plant, Increase. Increase. I plant, but it's God who gave the increase. You can plant your seed, but it is God who gave the increase. If you want God's increase, you got to plant the seed. You got to make a sacrifice that God has something to work with. If you hold it in your hand, all you're going to have for the rest of your life is a seed that will just last for one seed. But I'm greedy. I'm greedy. I want many seeds. So I'm going to plant my seed so God can give the increase. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody shall increase. I want increase. So I'm going to plant my seed because I want my increase. And increase will come as long as it is in the hand of God. Amen. 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 The Bible said, the Bible said a seed is just a seed on by itself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm not lying to you. To find one's purpose, one must come to a place of nothingness before God. A place of humility. The Bible said if you, if you, if you love your life, you will lose it. In other words, you've got to give back yourself to God. Because if you love this seed so much that you don't want to plant it, all you're going to live with is your lonely seed. 
If you love your life, you will lose it. Can I say this to you? Thinking of it, if you are not a selfish person, you would want the seed to blossom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if Jesus was a selfish God, he would say, Father, let this cup pass from me. In other words, in other words, I, I'm not going through this again. I, I don't care if Jesus was selfish. If we keep the seed in our hand and don't want to plant it, it's a sign of selfishness. Yes. Amen. Because the seed is not meant to remain just one seed. The seed is supposed to give birth to another. Yes. Hello, somebody. When you plant the seed, you are giving birth to another. Hallelujah, somebody. When you when you when you marry to somebody, you are trying to, to, to give birth to another because you want your name to continue. You want the church to continue to grow from church to church to church. You want the church, the gospel to spread. If Paul, the apostle, was selfish, we wouldn't be here today serving God and trumping up. He planted the seed so the seed could come alive. So you and I Worship God. Amen. Amen. Plant your seed. Yes. Let it go. Amen. Loose the seed. Mm -hmm. Let the seed go to accomplish what it was destined to be. The seed is not destined to die in your hand because if it's in your hand, it's a dead seed. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Don't kill the seed. Plant it so it can come to something. Yes. Plant the seed. Plant the seed. To find your purpose, one must come to a place of nothingness before God. A defining moment. Nothingness means different things in different contexts. According to my research, from this perspective of life, nothingness means death. Not death in the physical sense, but death in the flesh. <clears throat> To a lover, nothingness might mean the absence of a, of a beloved. To a parent, it might mean the absence of children. To a printer, the, the absence of color. To a reader, a world without books. To a person impassioned with empathy. The absence of emotional numbness. Sadness by itself has no meaning without the reference of joy. To a theologian or a philosopher, nothingness meant the timeless and speechless infinite known only by God. Nothingness is a place of emptiness, humbleness, hopefulness and willingness to start a new beginning. In other words, we must empty yourself of the issue we walk around with. Empty yourself so that you can be replenished. Empty yourself so you can be restored. You can't be so learned that there is nothing, that, that there is no more room for learning. Lifelong learning is necessary. We must see how insignificant we are without God. Until we discover that, our educations, our achievement, our title, our money, our fame mean nothing to God. We must plant that seed. We must give up our worldly life to live this Christian life. The Bible said that we must be born again. Following Christ involves self-sacrifice. For us to live this Christian life, we must first die to the flesh. For us to gain eternal life, we must give up this life. The whole must give way to the new. And the present must give way to the future. This sermon to us is a willingness to plant our seed. Because all of us have a seed. 
All of us have a responsibility. All of us have a calling on our life. Sometimes we complain, why are we not? Why are we not gaining? Why are we not? Because we have the seed. And we're cherishing this seed. We're so holding on so tight to the seed. We're not willing to plant the seed. The darkness must give way to the light. Because none of these live in the same world. Death must give way to life. Some things must change for something to happen. It is not in reality that any of these two things live in the same world. Darkness does not live in the same world as light. It's either one or the other. Am I making sense? Amen. Whosoever, whatsoever, we are to become in Christ can only come about if whatsoever we are is allowed to die. <laughs> we have to die. The end is the new beginning. Transformation is a process that starts with a ending. Transformation is a process that starts with a ending. One of the main thing about transformation, one of the biggest example, is the example of a caterpillar. We know the caterpillar. I don't know about you, but when I was when I, when I was a child, lived in Jamaica. Many of you don't know that I used to live in Warwick here. We used to go around looking for butterflies. How beautiful they are! My sisters and I used to compete. Who can catch the most butterflies? We run against each other trying to catch a butterfly. Little did I know that every time we see a caterpillar, we will kill it. Because we are looking for beautiful butterfly, but we hate those ugly caterpillars. Not knowing that it is the caterpillar who becomes the butterfly. I will kill them, squash them. Look at this ugly thing, I hate it. But I just love the butterfly. But we have to change from that ugly caterpillar yes. to become that beautiful butterfly. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. But, 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 but to become that beautiful butterfly, the caterpillar has to go through a process. Yes. They say that the caterpillar has to reach a place where it literally turns upside down. The last moment of transformation for the caterpillar to turn into a butterfly is when it turns upside down. In other words, you got to turn inside out. Yes. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Yes. Sometimes transformation will bring you to some rough process. Yes. 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 It will take your inside out and turn you around. The Bible said, he lift me up and he turned me around and he planted my feet on solid ground. Yes. If you don't want to be transformed, God cannot turn you around. Amen. It's ugly. crazy looking thing turn into this beautiful butterfly some of the situations that we go through in life is hugging mm -hmm. the broken relationship mm -hmm. the children that disrespect you the family member that curse you out and tell everybody about your last deed or scandalize you on Facebook and Twitter Come to church and stand at the gate and said, you know Pastor Wayne is no good. He look good, but it's not good. Sometimes it's not your deed they're telling. They're telling your deed, their deed and you. <laughs> but the transformation process that we go through in life is not easy. But you got to be willing to take the sacrifice because life is about sacrifice. If you want to reach to your greatness, if you want to master your craft, you got to go through the process. Amen. And sometimes the process is painful. 
And you have to make a decision whether you're going to quit during the painful process or you're going to go through the process to reach your purpose. The seed must die. Because in the seed, there is a huge tree. Unless the seed dies, that tree cannot come alive because they don't live in the same world. Can I share one last thing with you? I'm going to tell you how important seed is. I happen to have some color in my home, my backyard that I planted probably two, three years ago. And every year, I would rate the spot. And the color will come alive. And that's good. I would take color all over and give to my friends. I brought some for you guys here. But something happened this year that I did not bargain for. I did not expect. I did not want it. I wasn't looking for it. I plant some grass seed because I do some work in the backyard. So I get a big bag, 20 pound bag of cross, sprint looking bag. Little do I know that I may come in contact with some color of seed. Right now in my backyard, I have, I have more color than grass. And I, and, and I want to cut the grass for the yard to look beautiful, but if I cut the grass, I'm going to mess up the color. Listen to this, listen to this. The color look that I don't want look better than the color look that I want. The color look that I have in my so-called color look bed compared to the color look that I thought supposed to be my grass. The grass color look, I'm going to call it grass color look. The grass color look look better. The seed they, 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 the leaves are fatter. They have a different color green. They just look more plummy. Is that the right word to use in church? Plummy? <laughs> they look more prosperous than the color load that I thought is my color load that I'm expecting. What are you saying, preacher? God, if you plant the seed, God will give you some unexpected blessing in the seed. You just got to let it go and let God because when you let it go people will gain from your benefit. I start to bring color. I bring color to my dentist. I said, Nish, please drop off this color. My dentist is right around me. Drop off this color at the dentist for me. God is in the place of blessing. Don't be selfish with your seed. Yes. Because the seed is not just for your benefit. Can I preach to you? Your seed is not just about you. It's about somebody that need a blessing. Yes. Hello, somebody. Yes. So many people eating color from my grass color. Yes. Amen. Some of my friends came over. They came over Friday night. They didn't ask no question. They said, where is the knife? I didn't know what they were asking. I said, go inside and get a knife. They go inside and get a knife. They start to cut color. And I was happy because guess what? I don't have to waste the color. If you come up my home, the, the grass is cut, but half of the grass is not cut because it's color. If you plant your seed and let it go, just water it. God will give the increase. Come on, somebody, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. God is a God of increase. You just got to plant the seed. Amen. 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 You just got to plant the seed. Yes. Go on, Brother Hezra. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hear God thanks this morning for yes. the message and the messenger. Mm. What is seed to grow, it has to die. Amen. Our <clears throat> song of discipleship an invitation is uh, 549 I'm pressing on the upward way new heights I'm gaining every day 
still praying as I onward bound, God planted my feet on higher ground. 549. The door of this church is open. As we sing, will you please come if you need Jesus? As you say, if you are a backslider and you want to give back your life to God, God will marry the backslider. If you are a sinner and you just want to repent, the Bible said, the angel in heaven rejoice over 90, over one sinner that need repentance more than over 99 saints that needs no repentance. As we sing, will you please come? Amen. I'm pressing on. when you know what you need. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to say a few words. And I often say there's no magic in these words. Mm -hmm. The only magic is if you are sincere with what you say. Okay. So I'm going to say the words and you're going to repeat after. I'm going to ask you to put your hands up. When you finish. Dear God. Dear God. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I surrender to you right now. I surrender to you right now. I accept you right now. I accept you right now. As my personal. As my personal. Lord. Lord. And Savior. And Savior. Lord. Lord. Accept me. Accept me. As your child. As your child. In the name of Jesus. In 
Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for dying for you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For setting me free. For setting me free. Thank you, Lord. For accepting me. For accepting me. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for your daughter right now that you will cover her in your name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Cover her under your blood. Let no weapon form against her prosper. Yeah. Let every tongue that rise up against her in judgment be condemned. Yeah. Father, I pray that you will supply your needs according to your riches and glory. I pray that you will make a way out of nowhere. God, I pray that you will break every yoke and you will set every captive free right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way in her life, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Open doors that are closed, Lord, and close the unnecessary door that are not needed in the name of Jesus. Touch her family, Lord, and watch over them, oh God. Bless their going out and their coming in. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sister Cummings, I'm going to ask you to bring her to the room, take her name and number, and give her a word of prayer. God bless you, God bless you. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah, give God a praise. Hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God. The altar is no hope to you if you're here today. You're going through some struggles, but you want to pray. You have some financial struggle, you have some financial need. The halter is hoping to you to come and pray. I want to pray with you. Sickness. A family member. We want to pray with you. Oh, you're here. Hallelujah. We have one more verse in that song? Yes. Go ahead, sing that one more verse. I want to live above the world. This is the time where we come and surrender to God. This is the time where we come and renew our strength. Oh yes, God, oh yes. Lord, lift me up. Church. Yes, Lord. Touch every home that represented in this church. Yes, 
Touch every leader as we leave this church. Touch our heart to evangelize this community. Touch everyone that is on the sick list. We pray in the name of Jesus. Because God, we have no other source but you. Our source, our hope is built on nothing less but Jesus. Jesus is blood and is righteousness. We dare not trust the sweetest for him. But we only lean upon your name. Because there's power in your name, God. Yes, Deliverance is in your name. Yes, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah to your name, God. We know that you are the God of the impossible. Because my extremity is God's opportunity. Yes. So, God, we thank you this day that whatever we even fail to ask, you will not fail to grant. Yes. Help us to plant or seed. Yes, that you can multiply far beyond we can expect. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Bless us individually. Bless us collectively. Yes. Let us celebrate that it was good yes. for us yes. to be here today because we feel your presence. Oh, hallelujah. In your presence, Lord, there are fullness of joy. And at your right hand, oh God, there are pleasures forevermore. Oh, hallelujah. We will not fail to give you glory. We will not fail to lift you up. We will not fail to call upon your name. Wonderful name. Mighty name. Awesome name. Ancients of days. Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah God. The same God of yesterday, today and forevermore. We give you glory and praise. We are privileged to have a God such as you. Because all other gods are idols and falls and dead. So we worship you God. In spirit and in truth. No one to him that is able yes. to keep us from falling. Be honor, be glory, dominion, and power. Both now and forevermore. The Lord bless you going in, you're coming out. Yes. The Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Somebody help us. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen.